for and uh, it's going to be very interesting very 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 interesting there was some born Terry shit there was some 20 minute gameplay I'm joking I don't know there was some Shadow Fox gameplay definitely they hit so scrub so scrub I don't know exactly what that does but it does something Nah, they just tell you, okay, with the added new stuff, okay. Okay, that'll be very... No cases completed, jeez. I've been exposed. A city on the verge of greatness. A new type of city, based not on the man, but on the automobile, the car, the symbol of freedom Don't body this, wait, wait, Jesus Christ, I'm terrible at this shit. Subtitles, cause some of this shit, I don't really understand, I know it's weird. Where every man can own his own home, and have room to breathe not be overlooked by his neighbors. Don't worry, the game does not like this part. Where it's just this cutscene. A quarter acre of the dream made possible by victory. Which I don't know why that is. The city of opportunists. The city of dreams. Where Hollywood will shape the thoughts and desires of the entire planet. The city of pioneers. Oh, Jesus. The city of dreamers. I guess it is just this one cutscene that's so chilly. I don't know why it's messing up. A city of undercurrents. Where not everything is as it seems. A 20th century city that will become a model for the world. A city that has no boundaries. Will stretch as far as the eye can see. Well, I can't wait to play this. I can't skip this at all, I think. I don't want to skip it anyway. In the Marine Corps, you deal with the chain of command. Mistakes get made, but you deal with them. You know what you're fighting for and that you're on the same team. But dealing with corruption is like chasing shadows. You never know whether the guy you're talking to is on the pad, or whether it's your partner. Or maybe even the watch commander. So who do you trust, Cole? I made up my mind a long time ago. KGBL calling car 14 Adam. 14 Adam, come in. Go ahead, KGPL. 14 Adam, see the detective an ambulance shooting at 6th and Industrial Street. It is 16 William request uniform assistance for an evidence search. 14 Adam, code 2. Roger, 14 Adam en route. Right, chops, here we go. Here we go again. They don't request uniforms Copy, for an evidence search unless there's some kind of catch. Ever the optimist. From the beam of sunshine himself. I'm like the best driver in the LA. Not really. I like trash like 24-7. For fuck's sake, when did I move? I think you're actually aiming for these people. I am, I'm trying. My teddy man, I don't look at him up. Slow down! Jesus. I'm so good at this.
Floyd Rose, homicide. You might back up? Yes, sir. Phelps and Dunn, Wilshire Division. We had a shooting took place down this alleyway. We have the Vic, Scooter Payton, a Negro male bagged up and on his way to Central Morgue. He did not Witness see that. Witnesses, a tall white that. guy, our shooter, put two in the Vic's head and then threw his piece. I need you guys to try and recover the gat. You want us to look anywhere in particular? Give it your best shot, guys. The dead guy's a low life. I'm not expecting any miracles here. And if we recover the weapon? Bag it and return it to technical services. Yes. Hurry it up, Floyd. We I'm got out places of here. to be. Happy hunting. Nah, don't worry. We'll be happy hunting. We're very happy hunting. This is a fist hump. Just going through the motions. You're probably right. Let's just get it over and done. All right. Have it your way. We'll search right up to the back wall. If you still don't come up with anything, come find me and we'll talk it out. Two heads Very are interesting. Than one. I'm kidding, I would just stay there for like two hours. I would. Oh, it's this. Oh, Look this, this is a jump. different one. Nope. Yep, chap, nope. Nope. Oh, here we go. This is what we definitely need. It's not my job to pick through other people's trash. Okay. See the story behind the hair headline. God damn it, what Shadow Fox read him. Dr. Fontaine. Could I have a word? Of course, young man. I really enjoyed your lecture, Doctor. Psychiatry seems to have a tremendous amount to offer. Why, thank you. I'm always happy to receive acknowledgement for my work. The mind is the last great mystery in medicine. Are you thinking of specializing, Mr. Sheldon? Or Courtney Sheldon? I'm only in second year, Doctor. They fast-tracked me a year because of my experience during the war. Ah. That's what I wanted to talk to you about. Battle fatigue and collapse under duress. Can it be helped? I would say yes, given the right set of circumstances. Trauma forces the mind to close down, retreat in on itself. We try to find ways to unlock the mind again combination of therapy and drug treatment. Hypnosis and therapy are powerful tools in the right hands, Shiv. I've been to visit some of the guys at the VA hospital. A good friend of mine, he's so far away. It's like he's wandering you around. You went through a lot me. together. Yes, doctor. Give me his details and I'll make a prognosis. I have a number of clinics in Los Angeles, Courtney Shelton, and your penance, or your friend's help, is to come and work at one of them in your spare time, with what little spare time a medical student has. Is that a deal? Is it ever? I, I can't thank you enough. I'm not promising a cure, Courtney. I want you to remember that. Every physician has patients that he cannot hope to cure, for whom he can only smooth the path to death. Jesus. Just move the path to death. The fuck? What have you got, Phelps? Anything? Jesus. Cole, come take a look at this. This guy's a cunt. I swear to God. I tell you, I'm jinxed. I always get landed with this crap. Sure you do, sure. What do you think? Have a good look around. It could be anywhere. I just want you annoying the AI. We're oh, never no, going to I mean... find it. It's a waste of time. Shooter put him up against the wall and blew his brains out. Hell of a way to go. Doesn't really matter how you go once you're gone. <laughs> Don't get all deep on me, Phelps. No, he's getting very deep, you know. I understand, right? Ralph. There's something on the rooftop. How the hell did you see that? I'm about a reflection in the window. Looks like it might be our weapon. I'm gonna see if I can find a way up there. All right, don't hurt yourself. No, try not to. The gun's up on the roof, right? So we need to find a way up. Here we go. What kind of chumps do these homicide Wesson, guys think we are? S71893.
But, uh, okay. Two rounds fired, and instead of dropping it down a drain, our shooter hoists it up here. Interesting guy. Very interesting. I mean, he's not myself. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. We should follow up on this now, before the perp tries to leave town. Uh, I definitely picked up that gun. I don't see it. Better no clue. We have the gun, Cole. Let's take it back to Central. We could get a commendation. Could show some initiative, Ralph, and see if we can come up with an owner. That's a long shot, Cole. It's a pretty fancy gun. You know a local gun store? Sure. There's a place a couple of blocks from here. Alright, hey, let's go. Holy shit, I was... What the fuck? That was weird. Are you sure about this? It's not really our gig. No harm in doing some digging. The suits didn't seem to give much of a damn. Such a little boy scout, Cole. You can't wait to get out of that uniform, can you? No, I You'd rather round wait. up drunks and help old ladies across the road? I'd rather get through the day without the captain's foot up my ass. It'll be fine, Ralph. You worry too much. Hey, the rusty at us. I get it. I'm just kidding. Oh, no, it's not hot. What the f Wait, that was weird. Okay, okay, I did not see a glitch. That was weird. No, I'm good at steering, you know, I'm so good at it, there's no one to explain it. Oh shit. This is definitely a rockstar game, definitely. Oh, that was close, that was close, there's gonna be a lot of most crashes here, but I can't wait to get into the other cases and actual crash and this shit. See how much damage I can do to say. Oh fuck. Straight! Keep it straight! What's so goddamn hard about that? It's it's hard man, it really is. I just cannot do it. I just can't do it. Shit. Yeah, here we go. Officers Phelps and Dunn. Can you tell us anything about this gun? Smith & Wesson. Model 27, registered Magnum. Chambered for 357. Nickel plated with pearl grips. Same gun used by General Pat. <laughs> You're not suggesting he's the owner? No, I'm not. You seem to know a lot about the weapon. I ought to. I sold it. You know this piece will stop a rhino. These babies? Our only available special order. Here's my Smith & Wesson order book. You mind if I take a look? Be my guest. This is about something bad, right? It's very bad. Model 27 with pearl grips, Cole. You see it on there? Model 27, model 27, model 27. Yeah, here we go. I love the nurse. Oh, We're in I luck, Errol Schroeder. 203 South Glass Street. Ordered the gun in February 46. Thanks, you've been a big help. Anytime. Always happy to help out the LAPD. No, you know, shut up. I could have sworn there were ducks here, not birds. Incidental. But still. Okay, that was terrifying. I thought something bad happened. Do we call it in? Let's see if he's at home. Owning the gun doesn't prove he pulled the trigger. Okay. In for a penny, in for a pound. Lead the way, Gunga Den. My god, that's weird. In for a penny, in for a pound. What the fuck? Oh, wait, yeah, I wanna drive out, I wanna drive out. I'm just to get in it and then get back out there and not strip it, but you know. Right, there we go. 288.95, there we go. Oh, 
probably wish I could turn all that shit off, but you know. Wait a minute. Take a shortcut. Nice if it is a shortcut, I don't know. Look out! Oh wow, it's so terrifying. Oh shit. Now that wasn't so hard, was it? Just because we're in uniform doesn't mean we can't use our initiative. I guess so. Seems a little too good to be true. One of a kind murder weapon bought locally using a real name? If Schroeder's our shooter, he's no criminal mastermind. Most of them aren't. That's why they get caught. And two out of every three crimes are done on impulse. Another fact from the Phelps Encyclopedia of Thin Air. You really are full of it. I truly am. I love driving on the right side of the road. Sorry, in the UK we drive on the left. I don't even know. Fuck. What are you doing to this car? I'm trying to pull it up. Is it here? Okay. That was weird. Where's the car? Alright. I want you to enter, okay? Schroeder, Harbin 2. Here we go. What do you guys want? I'm Officer Cole Phelps. This is Officer Dunn, Wilshire Division. You're the owner of a Smith & Wesson Model 27, nickel-plated with pearl grips? I might be. What of it? Then you'll be surprised to know that Scooter Payton was murdered tonight with your gun. You're out of your mind. Scooter, he works for me. I have that gun here in my drawer. What the fuck is going on here? You're under arrest, Schroeder. Cuff him, Ralph. No way. You're not taking me down for this. Don't worry, we will. You ready, tough guy? Huh? I'm fucking born ready. Come on, we'll play it on the table. Come on. All right. If you really want to oh, dance. Oh shit! Oh shit! That's just dancing death now. and hit me. Oh, that was this close, buddy. Tears. Oh, 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 shit, I was close. I'm so good at that shit, man, that isn't even funny. Oh, uppercut shit, what the fuck? Ralph, I don't know what you alright? I'm fine, I hardly felt it. He's lucky he caught me off guard. Keep an eye on him, Ralph. I'm gonna take a look around. Here we go. No way I'll leave this. Believe it or not, to go on. there is a trophy where you have to find all the shit in the game. Not ninety-five percent, whatever. Probably nothing. It would take a smarter man than me to connect that. I don't think this is going to help us. Here we go. List of names in a series of numbers. Floyd Rose's name is in this book. Phelps, we can come out of this all bright and shiny with a commendation, or stick our schlongs in a hornet's nest. Call it in, partner, and leave the book where you found it. It was a digital or not, say that. Officer Phelps, badge 1247. 
Pato. Fucking sons of bitches, get in this line now before I lose my temper. Excuse me, Sergeant, but... Excuse me? Fuck you. You say another word and I'll break your fucking head and have you in the brig. Some of us are here for... I know why you're here, asswipe. I'm having a bad day, Private. Some people don't seem to want to get on this bus. I didn't ask for your help. He didn't ask for your help. Can you believe this guy? Who are you two? Abbott and Costello? We're here for OCS, Sergeant. So it's the three fucking stooges and you're here for OCS. God help this fucking country in the USMC. The Japanese will do the world a favor and kill you quickly. All three of you are on report. What are your fucking names? Phelps. Kelso. Merrill. Any other gentlemen for OCS? OCS is at Elliot. You take the Camp Elliot bus over there. This bus is for MCRD. This bus is for men who want to fight. Jesus and pancakes. Well, you picked the right place, Cole. A city that needed an honest cop like a thirsty man needed water. You'd heard the stories, but you weren't interested. You were here to fight the good fight, solve cases, right wrongs. But the force is like politics. There's no city on the fence. You have to choose sides. A brown paper envelope or a Greyhound ticket to Palookaville. They could only ever end one way. All units at 211 in progress and shots fired at Westlake Savings and Loan. 1415 West 3rd Street. Unit to handle identifying code 3. We'll take that. It's only a couple blocks from here. 14 Adam calling KGPL. We'll handle the 211. Roger that, 14 Adam. Be advised suspects are armed and dangerous. Roger, KGPL. Working out of my room. Now, here we go. Oh my god, I was close. Make it quick, you guys. The cops are here. We gotta move it. Use the I cover, Phelps. We don't know how many are in there. Take it slow. Backup will be here soon. LAPD, put down your weapons. The bank is surrounded. I'm offering you Not a, a chance to... Chance, copper. Stay down. Jesus. Oh, my God. Thank you. Any real work? That's it? We got them all? I think we got them, Cole. Should be all clear. Damn it, I wish I dropped a gun. Lieutenant Hopkins says anytime you reach for the shotguns, you're either going to end up dead or wearing a citation. So I guess... It's okay, Ralph. You did well in there. Glad you had my back. Man couldn't ask for a better partner. This kind of opportunity comes along once in a lifetime, Hank. <laughs> I have to grasp it. You have to survive at first, Cole. You're the veterans. The Japs love to shoot officers. If I can make a name for myself in this war, 
my future. Thinking of taking on a company of the Emperor's finest single-handed? You don't seem the Sergeant York type to me. When I need your opinion, Kelso, I'll ask for it. They talk about officers like you in boot camp, Cole. They call it the Custer Syndrome. Guys who go around dreaming of fame and glory and getting all of their men killed in the process. Our duty is to lead, Kelso. And their duty is to die for your wonderful future? Jesus. Cole Phelps and Jack Kelso. With some people, it's as simple as chemistry. Two guys who should have been friends, but their personalities got in the way. Phelps, a good guy, wound way too tight. And Kelso, a quiet man who could never walk away from a fight. Well, it's a shame you don't like to talk about it, Cole. Ralph, friends who want to stay friends don't discuss religion or politics. And in my case, you can add the war to that. I know that bum. Wendell Bowers. I put him away before he jumped parole. Get after him, Phelps. I'll head him off in the car. Not eight. Right, here we go. Wendell Bowers! Stop! LAPD! You can go screw yourselves. Why, you... He's hiding in the alley! <laughs> Bowers, My hold God, it right there. Faster? Holy shit. Stop now or I will shoot. I won't tell Man, you again, Jesus, 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 Dunn, face. watch your fire. You don't want to do this, Wendell. Get down from there right now. Give it up, Wendell. Stay the hell away from me. Nah, nah, no phone for that. No way I'm going back inside. I've done my time. It's over, Bowers. You assholes already screwed me once. The mother will screw you twice on the sun, right? Give it up, Bowers. There's nowhere left to go. Looks like we've got the place to ourselves. Come on then. Give it up, boy. Wendell. Oh, it's you're over, Bowers. You fuck. Fucking bitch, nobody punches my hole. How you doing, Wendell? Your parole officer's feeling lonely. He's got a hole in his life for an asshole like you. You can make it up to him in ten years' time. Watch your head. This hump will be back in the Iron Hotel by tomorrow night. Nice work, Cole. You run track in high school? Sure, I did. Sure. Part of the tradition of the Marine Corps and being an officer in the Marine Corps is the ability to make tough decisions. The right decision is not always the popular one. The right decision will get the men you care about killed. These ratings and your ability to give them frankly and truthfully directly affect your chances of successfully becoming a Marine officer. Candidate Phelps, you have the floor. Esprit de Corps, Merrill, 10. Franklin, 8. Weiss, 10. Eight, Donahoe, six, Kowalski, six, Hudson, five, Kelso, two, leadership, Donahoe, eight, Franklin, seven, Merrill, six, Kowalski, six, Weiss, five, Hudson, five, Kelso, one. My God. Candidate Kelso. I'm sorry, Captain, but I joined the Marine Corps to fight the enemy, not get involved in the schoolboy chicken shit. Kelso, in my office, now.
For every cop, there's the case that makes you. Gives you that leg up. Gets you recognized as the shining new star in the squad. The case that you solve that shows that you have the gumption, the gung-ho, the get-up-and-go to make you stand out from your average rank-and-file patrolman. This could be the one goal. LAPD, could you stand clear of the body, please? Has anyone called an ambulance? We've called an ambulance and the police, but I'm afraid he's dead. Okay, stand further back and move along. It's your choice, but make it quick, people. Hey, Cole. You got here quick. My beat crosses 7th Street. Okay. You're first reporting, then. We'll get a perimeter going and move the crowd on. You better see what you can find out before the homicide dicks show up. I'll be with you in a moment. Homicide Everybody dicks. stay back. Let us All do right. our job. FN Browning, serial number 01138. Might need to run it by a gun store. Eagleson's gun store is a couple blocks from here. Not eight chop. Broad daylight, a crowded street. Now I've seen everything. C. Galetta, layaway receipt, pearl earrings, made out to Bank of Arcadia. Arcadia, jeez, and there's still shit going on in the background. Alright, hey. My god, that must be it. No, no, no. There we go. Shell casings. These look like 32s. This guy in the crowd thinks he saw something, Cole. You better take a statement. Alright, AB is just Alright, alright. Yes, it's a dead person. Hey, chill it, man. Someday you'll say Sir, I'm Officer Phelps. What exactly did you see? I heard the shots. I thought it was a car backfiring. Uh, I saw a girl run at the shoe store. Speak to the witness before homicide arrives, Phelps. If you think she's lying, don't be afraid to get forceful. Verbally, of course. And don't accuse her of anything without proof. Lawyers love that shit. And if you're sure she's straight up, try the general approach. See what you can coax out of her. No, it ain't. Is this like Teddy getting Teddy? Uh, can I, can I help you, sir? I'm Officer Phelps, miss. I'm here about the shooting. Did you know the victim? <laughs> he was my boss. Mr. Gage. Mr. Gage's first name? Everett. And you are? Galleta. Clovis Galleta. Hey, right, here we go. Yep, mm -hmm. Teddy Gage. You think you could tell me exactly what happened, miss? I look around the shops at lunch. I was in a store when Mr. Gage, my boss, bursts in yelling that I'm late on my lunch. And? We came back. I was angry. I walked in front. I heard shots. I turned and saw Mr. Gage fall. Alright. Here's the witness. You're lying, Miss Coletta. You know what happened and why. You're going to tell me. There's nothing to tell. 
I've done nothing wrong. How can you prove different? Your pearl earrings, Miss Galetta. You've been paying for them for a whole year. Stop lying and tell me what happened at the jewelry store. Oh, God. I won't lose the earrings, will I? You could lose your freedom, you little fool, if you don't stop obstructing a murder investigation. Mr. Kalu. Edgar Kalu. He runs the jewelry store. He's showing me a lovely watch. Mr. Gage bursts in. Mr. Kalu gets very angry with Mr. Gage, and they start yelling at each other. Mr. Gage tells me that all of the things in the store are junk, nickel-plated, made in Japan, and yells at me to get back to work. Then what happened? We get back here, and I hear a loud bang. Mr. Gage clutches at his back. I hear another bang, and another, and another. Mr. Gage falls to his knees. It looked very painful. Yeah, all right. Which jewelry store? Hartfields. Broadway, between 5th and 6th. Did you see the person who shot Mr. Gage? Of course I did. Mr. Callow looked very angry. He kept firing the gun. He kept pulling the trigger. He threw the gun in a bin and turned and walked away. Not a... The act is a bad cop, okay. You're making me angry, Miss Galetta. Is that what you want? Tell me why Mr. Kalu shot Mr. Gage. Mr. Gage hates Jews. A lot of people do. It's not my fault if he has nice things. How many shots did you hear, Miss Galetta? It's difficult to remember. It sounded like there were so many. And they were so loud. Hot tires, good call. Okay. I need you to concentrate, Miss Galetta. Even minor details can become important later on. Well, there was one bang. And then another. And then three very quickly close together. Five. Thank you for your help, ma'am. You've been very brave. We'll need you to make a formal statement about what happened to Mr. Cage. Does that mean I can still collect my... my... Well, never mind. Yes, officer, I'll make a statement. Jesus, let's get the hell out of here. We have the murder weapon. And the murderer. The girl saw it all. Our killer works at a jewelry store called Hartfield. That's a couple of blocks from here. You thinking what I'm thinking? Tate, maintain the perimeter. Okay. Meet the partner Joy, but where's the fun in that? to kill someone oh my god and your partner he screams at you like a teddy or something you know oh shit slow down California. Oh, 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 that was close. Does that go in the scratches on it? Oh, it does the weights came off and everything. Officers, what can I do you for? Officers Phelps and Dunn, sir, Wilshire Division. We need you to trace a serial number. Sure. 
What's the make and model? FN Browning, model 1922. The serial number is 01138. You don't say. Well, I didn't sell it. Europeans love them, but it's pretty rare you find one over here. Although I did have one in here a couple of weeks back. Remember the owner? Yeah. Kalu. Edgar Kalu was his name. Thing looks like he'd never been fired, but he brought it in here for cleaning anyway. Then he bought a box of cartridges and he left. Do you know where we can find Mr. Kalu? Told me he was on his lunch break. Said he worked at Hartfield's jewelry store just up on Broadway. Thanks for your help. Now let's go. <laughs> I would leave the pawn up behind, but they get confused, like insanely confused. And it glitches the game. Yeah, here we go. I don't like it that random shit just spawns in front of me, man. That's terrifying. Oh shit. Kidding me? Pull the petty, you're waiting on me. What are you doing to this car? I want to destroy it. I want to destroy it. Wait a minute. No, no, okay. Joy safety. Safely, god damn it. Here we go, chat. Officer, can I interest you in a new watch? Fuck your watch. Officer Cole Phelps, are you Edgar Kalu? Uh, no. Uh, Mr. Kalu is out back. He said he'd lie down. I'll buzz him for you. Here we go, here we go. Son of a bitch! Go, Cole, go! Kalu! No, Get back here! I'll do that in a minute. He's only a writer, he can't really help it. Be careful, Hurry, he looks you dangerous. Captain? Too late, Kalu! My god, the speed he went, holy shit. <laughs> Fuck's sake, it was like watching Sonic. Edgar Kalu, you're under arrest for the murder of Everett Gage. <laughs> the case that makes you, and the case that breaks you. The one you never solve. The one that keeps you awake at night. The case that gnaws at your guts and ruins your marriage. The case that keeps you propping up a bar as you relive the what-ifs, the might-have-beens, the half-leads, and the half-truths. The case that other cops murmur about whenever you walk past. The case you never, ever discuss. God's mill may grind slowly, but it grinds finely, son. I hear it's you who nabbed our malefactor from the shooting yesterday. Yes, sir. Then tell me, Boyle. I hear you're quite the climber, a man of initiative. How would you like a chance at smiting this man with the sword of justice? You're asking me to, to conduct the interview, sir? I am, young Phelps. You've only been with us a short time and you've assembled yourself a stellar arrest record. Not to mention the fine work you did in the war, sending heathens back to the hell they came from. But I'm curious as to whether you can turn your hand to interrogation. It takes a certain animal cunning, lad. Do you think you might be ready for that? Yes, sir. I think I am. Good man. You need many things for a conviction, young Phelps. A motive, opportunity, hard evidence, and best of all, a confession. If you fail in the former, you can always use a modicum of violence to obtain the latter. How are you feeling, lad? Fine, sir. Very good. The evidence is overwhelming. May the cat eat him and the cat be eaten by the devil. Bring me a confession, young Phelps. This is your chance. Don't fail me. I sure will fail. Has my lawyer arrived yet? I want to see my lawyer. 
A lawyer can't help you, Mr. Kalu. You shot a man dead in cold blood. You're going to have to pay for that. Did so I, you man? You followed Everett Gage and the girl back to the shoe store. You put five rounds in Gage's back. Gage was a was a bastard. Whatever he got, he got what was coming. But it had nothing to do with me. Yeah, forward or read break shows not of use in interrogations, okay. You shot Gage, and we know why. We can put you at the scene. You can't prove anything. We know all about the argument. Miss Galetta made a statement. You're you're counting on the girl? You think her testimony is gonna stand up in court? You're going to the gas chamber, Edgar. That you hating fuck couldn't leave me alone. I had a sale. That girl was ready to buy. Jeez. Let's change the subject. You fasting for Yom Kippur, Mr. Kalu? Yeah, let's change the subject, you going motherfucker. How about baseball? You're not denying you're a Jew, Mr. Kalu. This is America. It's not Germany. It's not a crime. Some people don't like Jews, Mr. Kalu. Yeah, and I guess you're one of them. Gage hated Jews, didn't Jesus. he, Mr. Kalu? I don't know what you're talking about. You left-wing leaning parasite. You expect me to sit here and listen to your drivel? You call me that? You sit there and you call me those names, you goddamn goy butt snatcher! You and that stump Gage! Why did you do it, Mr. Kalu? Gage. He's in the Chamber of Commerce. He's in with all those momsers. He blocked every proposal I ever put forward. Kike this and kike that. He's been trying to ruin my business for years. Edgar Kalu, I'm charging you with the first degree murder of Everett Gage. I respect your beliefs and your right to hold them. I hope for your sake, the jury can commute to murder in the second degree. May God have mercy on you, sir. Jesus. Masterfully done, Officer Phelps. It is just Officer Phelps, isn't it, lad? Yes, sir. Then let me have a word with the Chief of Police, young Phelps. The department needs heroes. A shining, honest face the public can admire. I applaud a man with your talent for unwavering justice. Back to your duties for now, Boyle. But here's a piece of advice. Get yourself two suits, get them pressed. You'll be needing them. Sure, chap. Fund me units. Here's your new desk, kid. You're on traffic. The hot sheet is posted here, next to the map. What's his problem? That's Biggs. He's an institution. So this is what all the fuss is about. Why couldn't they build a freeway that goes past my place? They haven't even approved the money yet, kid. The bond issue won't be till December. It'll be years before any of this will happen. Here's your new partner, Stefan Burkowski. I've heard all about you, Phelps. You go easy on me and let me earn the odd citation, and maybe we'll get along fine. I'm here to learn, detective. Oh, he's an intense one, isn't he, Mel? Who's intense? The newly minted detective here, Cole Phelps. Hi, Phelps. I'll be keeping an eye on you. I could spend a little time basking in reflected glory. Make a change from busting hookers and dope fiends. 
Who was that, Commander? Roy Earl, chief detective and advice. Are they all dressed like movie stars? Well, Roy is a movie star. And the whole of the seedy side of L.A. is his audience. <laughs> what is that supposed to mean? Stick with me, kid. You'll find out. Strange. And now some housekeeping. Warm Central Division welcome for Detective Cole Phelps. Some of you guys may know Phelps. He's the cop who broke the jewelry store murder. Stand up and take a bow, Phelps. If it's all right with you, That's sir. That's an order, Phelps. Ooh. Oh, funny. <laughs> Phelps is one of only two serving LAPD officers who received the Silver Star during the war. Really gave it those lousy Japanese, eh, Phelps? Uh, I did my best, Captain. Why are you war heroes always so modest? I've partnered Phelps with everybody's favorite pole, Stefan Bukowski. <laughs> Hope you like work, kid. Bukowski sure as hell doesn't. Well, that's why we have partners, right? <laughs> okay, okay, can it, guys. Stick with Bukowski. He's a good cop. He knows traffic inside now. I'm going to start you out with one case. You do okay? I'll give you a couple more. You screw up, you'll be rousting vagrants and running license plates. Now get down to the PE Freight Depot, 6th and Alameda. A patrolman called in a suspicious vehicle. Signs of foul play. See what you can find out. Come on, Phelps. come to California to be a secretary. They really pushed you through quick, didn't they? Six years on patrol before I got to this desk. You were here in five minutes. What do you want me to say? I didn't ask for any favors. Phelps, there's a crime happening somewhere. Go find it. Mary says he'll say it. Isn't he the You know this place? Sure. Near the old gas works and signal depot in the warehouse district. I'll direct. All units of 459 incurred at 6th and 7th. So, tell me a little about yourself, Phelps. Are we friends now, Bukowski? We have to work together. Don't be so touchy. I grew up in San Francisco. My father was in shipping. I went to college at Stanford. Did two years ROTC before main OCS at Camp Elliott. Shipped out in early 45 as a first lieutenant and fought in the Okinawa campaign. I was wounded, shipped back home. Did a year on the beat, now I'm here. So you won the Silver Star. I don't want to talk about it. Now let me get this straight. You single-handedly killed 40 Japs on this hill in Okinawa. No, you were up there all night. Draped in the flag, knife between your teeth, gun at the ready. You finished? The Emperor Hirohito himself leading the charge against you. I did my part, Bukowski. What did you do? I kept the streets of L.A. safe for the people. Yeah. Now I get it. Unfit for service. Now fuck you, Phelps. I earned a bravery citation during the Zuda riots. Sounds like you had it rough. I did my job. No one is saying you didn't. I did six years as a patrolman. That's the third time you've told me. Watch it! Body chops. All units, a 459 just occurred at 6th and Saris. Any unit to handle, code 2 okay. identified. 11K, go ahead, KGPL. 11K, a 459 suspect just left 6th and... Here we go. Up on the roof, officer. He has a mask on his face. I caught sight when he shoved past me, but be careful. I saw him waving a gun. Nobody will get us killed. Get 
Give it up now! Make it easy on yourself! Get the hell away from me! What's your rut? Somebody will get Hurry, us shot. You can still catch him! Is somebody going to tell us what the hell is going on? What the fuck? That was weird. I was glitched on whatever. That's no way to drive. I'm sure this game goes by accuracy as well. So I don't want to mess a shot. Now, oh shit. Are we going to make a bargain or what? Put the weapon down, now! Okay, I can get us, I can do this, I can do this. Put your weapons down and- <gasps> Don't worry, don't worry, we'll get it next time. Up on the roof, officer. He has a mask on his face. I caught sight when he shoved past me, but be careful. I saw him waving a gun. Now, make it easy on yourself. Get the hell away from me. Hurry, you can still catch him. One eighty forty, holy shit. That you, Bukowski? Go on through. Parking lot straight ahead. I need to get back to work, officer. The detectives are here now. You repeat to them what you told me. I did the right thing by calling this in. I'm just a working stick. Just give them your story and you'll be all right. This is your first case, Phelps. It's okay to admit it if you're stumped. If you don't know what to do next, just come talk to me and we'll see what we can figure out. Thanks, Stefan. You're okay. Nah, uh, this'll be fun. I'm Officer Hart. Phelps, traffic. What have you got? Abandoned car, probably stolen. The solid citizen is Nate Wilkie. He called it in. What gives with the corner? There's blood all over the interior. Someone's copped the full Broderick, but no stiff as yet. We have an owner for the car? The 
car is registered to an Adrian Black, just north of Bunker Hill. All right, we'll take a look around. I'll keep Mr. Wilkie talking, but don't make him wait too long. He's the restless type. No, they... Nice day for it. How long okay. Are you be here, sir? Doc, Detective Phelps, what have we got? A lot of blood for a blunt force injury. The victim must be in a very bad way. Any sign of the guy? Not unless he's in the trunk of the car. No, they... I don't think this is anything. Mr. F. Morgan picked up a live pig yesterday? The victim looks to have lost a lot of blood. No, they... The brand name might give us something to go on. Mm, that kind of be it. Tell me anything. Missing something. There we go. Thirty two years old, married, sounds like an average guy. What was he doing out here? times I guess Stenzel glasses home repaired by the look of it Yeah, it says. Sir, I'm Detective Phelps. The name's Nate Wilkie. You found the vehicle? Sure. Saw it just sitting there. Strange place to be parking your car. Figured I'd better take a look. And then I saw all the blood. So I called the police. Mind if I ask what you were doing out here? Well, I work for the railway. I was on my way out to the switch and reckon I'd take a shortcut. Did you see anybody else in the yard? Maybe somebody hanging around the car? Nope. I hadn't seen a soul all day till you boys turned up. Do you know Adrian Black, Mr. Wilkie? No, sir. That ain't a name I'm familiar with. You ever seen the car before? Funny enough, I did. A couple of nights ago, it was over there in the parking lot. I know most of the cars that park here regular, so it kind of stood out. We found a steel pipe with blood on it near the car. Do you know anything about it, Mr. Wilkie? No, sir. I went straight for the law when I saw the car was full of blood. When you saw the blood, was it wet, bright red, or uh, darker like it is now? Darker, I'd say. Looked dry already. The wallet by the car. Was there anything in it when you arrived? You accusing me of something, mister? 
Do you want the patrolman to hold you down while we turn out your pockets, Mr. Wilkie? Maybe I checked inside that wallet. Not that I was going to steal anything. Maybe I took a look. But there weren't no money in there. Not even change. Thank you for your help, Mr. Wilkie. We'll contact your employer if we need anything more from you. If you have to, I guess. I can't really spend no more time over this. Somebody's got to inform the wife, Phelps. If you're done here, we'll head over there now. Twenty Bunker Hill Avenue. You know where that is? Behind Bunker Hill. A couple blocks north of Central Station. So, what do we tell the wife? We play it by the book. There's no stiff yet, so let's see how it plays out. Any century into the 415 possible window case at 7th and Flower, unit to handle code 3, identify. Could be a car theft gone wrong. Make Black drive somewhere lonely, then give him a tap. But why leave the car? Well, obviously, someone got a little heavy-handed. It's the wrong way around. Well, how so, genius? Where is Adrian? If you've gone to all the trouble to steal the car and it goes wrong, you leave the body behind, not the car. Well, you got something there, Phelps. It doesn't add up. Read about the guy on the crossing yesterday? No, what happened? Over on Lincoln Avenue. This guy's driving along and his oil light comes on. He stops the car and gets out. <laughs> he pops the hood and he's on a rail crossing. Oh, <laughs> you got it. He got his head under there checking the oil, and the Southern Pacific freight slams into his car doing 90 miles an hour. The car came to a rest more than a mile down the track. <laughs> what a pointless waste of life. You'll get plenty of blood and guts and mindless stupidity working traffic, folks. And who needs a Second Amendment when we'll give a goddamn fool the license to get behind the wheel of an automobile? If it's a kidnapping, why leave the victim's ID? If it's a murder, why leave the car? The evidence doesn't add up. Free lesson, Phelps. Evidence will only get you so far. You ask me, the whole thing feels hinky as hell. What I wouldn't give to have your powers of intuition, Bukowski. Don't worry, kid. Keep watching the master and you'll get there one day. Let's go introduce ourselves. You talk to her, Phelps. I'm no good at this shoulder to cry on stuff. Just a minute. LAPD, Mrs. Black. May we come in? We have some bad news, and we'd rather discuss this in private. I'm Margaret Black. Oh, we can discuss this in the living room. Please come in. We're going to have a look around, then we'll talk. This must be Adrian's. Stenzel. So the glasses are a match. To my Adrian. This thing gets more and more interesting. Cavanaugh's. So who brought this home? Maybe Adrian was a patron. R and I should have an address. A 
used ticket to Seattle and a suitcase gone missing. Someone couldn't wait to get out of this house. This was only recently installed, not two days ago. Maybe it's time we took a look around outside. No use leaving the thing half finished. That can't be right. So the pipe missing from Mr. Black's heater is the same one that killed him. Huh. Seems like the assailant is a little closer to home. Lie down, make yourself comfortable. So, you're a friend of Courtney's? Yes, Doctor. He seems very concerned about you. I have these visions, these blinding visions. I can't get them out of my head. My skull, it, it feels like it's in a vice. I'm going to give you something to calm your nerves. I want to take you on a journey, a journey back. I want you to remember the good things about your past, the occasions that made you laugh, the times that made you smile. Separate bedrooms, separate pictures. What gives here?
Oh, definitely missing something. I can't be it, no way. Your husband Damn. drives a blue Lincoln, Mrs. Black? That's correct. The car has been found abandoned, and I'm afraid there are signs of foul play. I knew something was wrong when he didn't come home. We believe your husband may be injured. We found a pipe on the scene with blood on it. Oh, no! My poor Adrian! Do you think you could answer some questions now, Mrs. Black? Of course. However I can help. We found a receipt in the trunk of your husband's car for a live pig. This receipt was made out to an F. Morgan. A pig? Adrian runs a tool business. That would be Frank Morgan. God knows what he's up to. What makes you say that about Morgan, ma'am? He's the foreman at my husband's plant. A very shady character. I've told Adrian he needs to keep his distance from the staff. They're always out drinking together. Was your husband wearing his glasses when he left here yesterday? Yes, he just bought a new pair. Go on. I kept telling him to throw those old ones away. He tried to repair them with tape. They looked terrible. Did your husband tell you where he was going last night? All he said was he was going to meet Frank for a drink. So nothing out of the usual then? Well, he came home early from work. He never comes home early. And he went out early too. He normally never leaves for the bar till about seven. Tell us about the photo of Adrian in the bedroom. What is there to tell? It's from his most recent business trip to Seattle. There's plenty to tell. You just won't tell it. You're lying about the photograph, Mrs. Black. You're incredibly rude and insensitive. But I guess you know that. I told you what I know about the picture. What about Nicole, Mrs. Black? Was your husband going to leave you for her? I've seen the photo frame. <laughs> he thinks I'm stupid, but women sense these things. I don't know if he intended to leave me or if it was just a fling. God only knows. I only want to know that he's safe. Your husband frequents Kavanaugh's bar? How did you know that? Adrian practically lives there after work. So Adrian spends a lot of time there? Up until recently, he's been away in Seattle a lot on business. I think you should come clean with us, Mrs. Black. Your husband is missing, and after our search, I'm willing to call the circumstances suspicious. Can you account for your movements last night? You're not accusing me, are you? Oh, what an awful thing to say. I was here all night, of course, waiting for Adrian to come home. Is there anyone who can vouch for that? Well, no. I... I was here alone. I cooked Adrian's dinner and waited, but he never came home. We'll keep you informed, Mrs. Black. Please do, Detective.
Phelps, one, two, four, seven. How can I help, Detective? I need an address on a Kavanaugh's bar. Certainly, Detective. One moment. Kavanaugh's bar, corner of Aliso and Hewitt, south side of Union Station. Thank you. Jesus, I'm glad to be out of there. Mr. and Mrs. Black don't seem to have the happiest home life. He's too scared to divorce her, and she's too much of a shrinking violet to throw him out. If this hadn't happened, they could have stayed miserable together forever. You think she could have killed him? She sure as hell doesn't seem the type. But stranger things have happened. No, you don't. We were at school together. Uh, how about you buy me a drink for, for old time's sake? You looking for someone? I love these waitresses. You know Frank Everyone's Morgan? A doll. Sure. Frank's a regular. He's a loner in the back. He's dull as dishwater. Frank Morgan? But I'm not with him. Who's asking? Cole Phelps, LAPD. I understand you're a friend of Adrian Black. Yeah, I know him. Are you aware that he's missing? No, I hadn't heard that. Tough break. We found Black's car abandoned in a freight depot, covered in blood. You know anything about that, Morgan? Hell no. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. I like Adrian. He, he's a good oh, boss. Please, don't tell me you actually believe this jerk-off, Phelps. You're lying, Morgan. You were there. And you're talking out your ass, detective. How about you prove I was out at that rail yard? Thought cops had their own bars. Well, if it's all the same to you, I'll go back to my drink.
thought cops had their own bars. Give me a sec. Uh... I just don't want to get us wrong because uh, get it wrong, kind of screwed. Well, if it's all the same to you, I'll go back to my drink. You were there, Morgan. We found a receipt in the trunk of the car. It has your name on it. We can call the slaughter yard and nail you on it. All right, already. That fool Adrian's fallen for some dame in Seattle. He wanted me to make it look like he'd been attacked. Where exactly is Black Hold Up? No idea. I think he took off for Seattle. I'm tired of your shtick, Morgan. Spill it! Or we take you out in the alley and we knock it out of you. He's holed up at my place. He's waiting for some money to come through before he blows town. An address? It's an apartment house at the corner of Temple and Figueroa. Apartment number two. I think that's all. Thanks for your help, Morgan. We appreciate it. Hey, I'm just glad I could help. I love cops. Cuff him, let him go. It's up to you, Phelps. There's no way I'm writing this idiot up. You got Morgan's address? Let's get over to his apartment. I've met some pretty good liars in my time. People who sound convincing because they actually believe their own bullshit. <laughs> the type is clever, hard to catch out. Frank Morgan is not one of those people. No, he is not. calling 11K. 11K, go ahead. Roger, KGPL. Time to reel this guy in, Phelps. Too close. Well, let's check the place out. Come on. Apartment two. Help you gentlemen? LAPD detectives, Mr. Black. You're under arrest. Look, I'm really sorry about this. I never tried to hurt anyone. I just needed to get away from LA. I won't put up a struggle. Just let me get my things. I knew it! Phelps, go after him. I'll try and head him off in the car. Remember, the gun is the last resort. There's no point running, Adrian.
Stop right there, Adrian. Mr. Black, get back here right now. I'm surprised it had not failed out. It's over, Adrian. Why not just come clean with her, Black? Why the melodrama? I thought it would be easier. No, it just got a whole lot harder. Adrian Black, you're under arrest for conspiracy and fraud. We'll see what the DA has to say about wasting police resources on a wild goose chase like this. You're gonna lose your wife, lose your job, and probably end up in the big house. I hope she was worth it, Adrian. That turned out to be quite some case, huh? Adrian, what an idiot. You got an arrest and a clearance in your first case, and in fine style, too. Well done, detective. Efficient investigation technique, good public presence. You keep that up and you learn from Bukowski here, you could go a long way in this department. Vehicle damage 58, my god. Okay, we're gonna keep this short. I'm already late for the DA. First up, Phelps, Bukowski. We got a report of a brand new Packard abandoned in an empty lot off 2nd Street between Olive and Grand. DR is one Oswald Jacobs says the vehicle was dumped in his backyard. There's a patrolman on site. Get down there and see what you can turn up. Any questions? Good, get going. Better go earn our pathetic wages. Rimsky, O'Halloran. Intelligence has information on a stolen car racket. An abandoned vehicle. We catch all the good ones, huh, Phelps? Sounds like there's more to it than that. Nobody dumps a shiny new Packard unless they borrowed it without asking. You don't say. You're on fire today, Einstein. Very funny. Come on, my intense protege. Let's go save the world. <laughs> You hear about Adrian? Broad in Seattle threw him out. Wife says she's gonna take him back. Women generally show more compassion. What are you talking about? Adrian dumped on her. He was humping the secretary. Margaret should show some pride. Pride comes before a fall. From experience. Phelps, traffic. I'm Officer Houlihan. Cars down the alleyway, detectives. We got a call about an abandoned vehicle? Yes, sir. The car has flags. Might be some kind of diplomatic vehicle. Has anyone touched this vehicle since you arrived? No. And that Jacob's bird over there was on station before I got here. We'll talk with him in a moment. Give us some time to look the place over. Sure, take your time. He's a sore-headed old son of a bitch, anyway. It's owned by the Argentinian Embassy. Stealing the wheels is for amateurs. The car ring would have stripped it in a warehouse.
No good to me. Combination wrench. Must have used it to remove the wheel lugs. Not sure this means much. Empty. Cole Phelps, badge 1247. How could I help, Detective? Could you run the name Dewey Brothers? Possibly a dealership or car mechanics workshop. One moment. Dewey Brothers Packard Dealership, 629 Figueroa Street. Got it. Thanks, ma'am. Okay. Must be glitched. Uh Okay, I think we found this one, but it may have been glitched, I'm not sure. Wait a minute. I need to check something. Wait a minute, I'm so confused right now. I must have taken the flag as a souvenir, can't have any street value. Ah, oh, thank God. To be honest with you, I think I've never played this case. So this is all like new to me, so I don't know if this is like something new or what. Wait a minute. Just tell me to go there again. This game is like trolling me right now, it really is. I 
I swear to God, I ain't get squelched. I'm confused. Give me a minute, guys. Ah, oh, right, right, right. Sorry, dude. Oswald Jacobs? That's right. What exactly happened here, Mr. Jacobs? Last night, I was looking out of my window. I like to keep an eye on what's going on. I can understand that. You see this empty lot? Damn kids play stickball here. Always breaking my windows. Always asking for their ball back. Can we get back to the car, Mr. Jacobs? Don't be impatient, Sonny. Anyways. Last night, I see this brand spanking new Packard up on bricks. Did you see who stole the Packard? Hell yes, I did. I saw three goddamn Mexicans going to work on it. Can you tell us what they were doing? Using the headlights of an old Ford so they could strip the thing. I yelled out to them, I'll call the cops. So they loaded up their car and drove off, tooting and hollering and yelling obscenities at me in Mexican. You speak Spanish, sir? No, I do not. I swear to God, I have never played this case. After the uh, Mexicans left, you didn't go anywhere near the car? After I scared them off? No, I didn't go anywhere near that car. You went out to the car. Once they were gone, you had to take a look for yourself. I was curious. Ain't a law against that. So what if I took a look around that car? You can't be accusing me of nothing. Tell me about the car they were driving. It was an old Ford. I didn't catch the license number. Ah, uh, here we go. You look like the kind of guy who notices details. You're right there. The car was old, but it looked brand new. Candy apple red pink job stands out a mile. What exactly did you see them take? They was working on the tires. That's all that was took. My God. This is going to annoy me because I actually don't know what case I'm on right now. Or did they add something to this or? I think I never really uh, played the DLCs or whatever, but if this isn't a DLC, I'd well, have to play it in like, I don't know. Give me a minute.
Just try to figure this out. Alright, maybe, maybe more than a minute. I swear to God, see if it's like doubt or something, I swear. Oh, no, so it used to be doubt, truth, whatever, but now Hey, it's I just pay my taxes, bad cop. so do yeah. some goddamn work! So to God, this is like DLC or something. Ah, I knew it was a DLC, this is why. So I've never played this. Let's see you walk. Let's see, let's see. Right there. Right. So what my did you take, God, Jacobs? You want my partner to pat you down? I found a notebook in the glove compartment. I was gonna show you. It's on the chair on my porch. Thank you for your help, Mr. Jacobs. You can speak to Officer Thibault about signing a formal statement. When you get the car out of the way, maybe you could come back and do something about those kids. Well, how about we bring you an umpire's mask? I don't get it, why is it still say nothing need to be here? I'm confused. So what next? Jacobs dumped the book he was reading in a hurry when we walked up. You curious what he didn't want us to see? I don't get it. It's a stolen car, not the Lindbergh baby. What more do you need to know? Screw it. Gonna be here all day. This has got to be the 50th abandoned vehicle call we have caught this year. One more and I'm going to go crazy. Not your favorite cases? You kidding me? This is barely even police work. Of all the bad guys in this city, we get lumped with the ones who can't even be bothered to keep what they steal. That's the thing about this game, you can't really get it wrong, otherwise you can get five stars. Oh my god. Oh, unbelievable! Oh, 
This is why I hate driving on the right. I'm used to driving on the left. Tell me, let me guess. You were making your way past the lot, caught sight of the new model four door, and couldn't help yourself. You could see yourself in that car and just had to take a closer look. Well, I can't say as I blame you. <laughs> LAPD, Mac. We'd like to speak with the owner. That's me, William Dewey, proprietor at your service. We're investigating the theft of a Packard belonging to the Argentine Embassy. Are you missing a combination wrench? I don't know, detective, but I know how we can find out. Follow me. We keep all our tools in here. Mind if we look around? Be my guest. You sure you guys aren't interested in a new car, huh? Maybe a used car. I have some nice used cars for guys in your wage bracket. Why don't you give us some alone time, Dewey? Go sell some cars or whatever it is that you do here. That's not right. Damn it. One left. Gabriel Delgado is missing a three-quarter. This doesn't pertain to the case. Circumstantial. Definitely we're missing something. This isn't what we're looking for. No good. We need diplomatic plates. Okay. If you don't mind, we have a few questions. Where can we find Delgado? I don't know. He sure as hell isn't here. Address, Dewey, or my partner shoves her head in a car door. Okay, all right. Apartment 3103 Hill Street. And tell him from me, if he ever shows his face around here again, I'm going to kick his butt from here to kingdom come. 
A wrench from this dealership was used to strip the wheels from a Packard last night, Mr. Dewey. A couple of Hispanics were seen taking parts. We've had a spate of thefts ourselves. Comes with the location. Even bastards will steal anything the minute your back is turned. What are you hiding, Dewey? Spill it! You don't want the LAPD getting too interested in this place. So I hire a few illegals. It's cheaper than hiring returning GIs. They have less attitude. Downside is, they're a little light-fingered. Thank you for your help, Mr. Dewey. No problem. God damn that kid. I'm just an honest car salesman. Seems like you just don't know who you can trust these days. Go into movies, Dewey. You're missing your calling. We really ought to take more time over the Packard Phelps. Let's head back to the empty lot. You read the story in the Examiner about the Navy developing three-dimensional movies? What's a dimension? You know, like a graph. Vertical axis is Y and horizontal is X. Well, that's clear as mud. Third dimension would be Z. So, things would be popping out of the screen. That's ridiculous. Scare people out of the theater. God's name would want that. I don't know. People scoffed at the idea of talkies and color, and look what we have now. Take the stairs. Okay, let's see what Gabriel has to say for himself. I just hope our Archangel hasn't already flown. What the hell is this guy doing? Uh, where do you see a number three marked on that door? Damn it. Yet. LAPD, ma'am. We're looking for Gabriel Delgado. Gabriel? We're from the police. Policia, you understand? Yes, I understand. Could you come inside? What is your name? Ana Rodriguez. Is Gabriel Delgado here, Ms. Rodriguez? No. What do you want with Gabriel? Is he in trouble? Stay where you are, Ms. Rodriguez. We need to take a look around. But he is not here. I have told you. Check out the surrounds. I'll stay with the broad. So how far along are you, Anna? Souvenirs are a dumb move. Right. So how's it going to be when you go into labor and he's not around? Home, the whole everything here is going to be relevant. He will be a good father. 
Already he works hard to provide for us. Okay, I'm Unless you way. help us here, Anna, your little one won't be seeing Papa for a very long time. Serving breakfast for two, Anna? You should have cleared up. Okay. Nothing significant. Optimistic call. Okay. Not much help. Wait a minute. Difficult to tell whether it's the suspect vehicle from the scene. Huh. Certainly Gabriel's pride and joy. God damn it, he hit this button. What? I know there was some outside. I just didn't know where. Oh, are you kidding me? It doesn't appear to be connected. Diplomatic license plates. Junk. All right, thank God. You're in serious trouble, Miss Rodriguez. But Gabriel is not here. I have done nothing wrong. Why did he steal the car, Anna? The customer insulted him. He has his honor, no? His honor, Anna? He said Dewey's friend tried to make a woman out of him. He no longer respects this man, Dewey. He took the car to show this maricon that he is a man. Tell us the truth, Anna. Has Gabriel been here? I haven't seen him for at least three nights. You keep lying to me, and I'll send you and your baby to jail. He lives here, but he hasn't come home. I swear it. Enough, Anna. There are signs all over this place that he's been back. He was here last night. I have never seen him so angry. He went out to his shed and put some things in it. I don't know what and I don't want to know. I love him. We found a license plate matching our stolen vehicle in the shed. Add in the assortment of parts, and we can make Gabriel for a dozen other thefts. It's time to get serious, Anna. You must ask these questions of Gabriel. I know nothing of these car parts. Then tell us where he is. If your baby is born in prison, Anna, the corrections officers will take it from you. 
You will see your son or daughter through a metal grate for half an hour a week. The start line is on first in Santa Fe. There is a spillway under the bridge that leads to the river. Many policia have wrecked trying to follow him. We will put in a good word for you, Anna. As far as we're concerned, this sits with Gabriel. Start line? That sounds like a street race to me. It's gotten out of hand this last year. No wonder Delgado has such an eye for fine automobiles. We know where the kid is. Let's go stop these clowns and get them off the streets. What kind of man leaves his pregnant girlfriend at home? Slow down! Pregnant girlfriends aren't always a barrel of laughs. Everyone needs to let off a little steam. Some guys wouldn't come back home at all. Are you talking from experience? Quick as we shut one of these races down, another one springs up somewhere else. Kids used to steal cars to sell them. Now they just want to wrap them around a lamppost. The next 16-year-old I have to peel off the sidewalk, you're calling the mother. I've had enough of those to last me a lifetime. All units, shots fired, officer needs help. Chateau and Valencia, Chateau and Valencia. Shots fired, officer needs help. Unit to handle code three. <laughs> Forty-seven, requesting assistance at first at Santa Fe. Reports of an illegal street race. Stay on Delgado. He's getting away. I'm gonna lose him. Shit. Delgado was our boy. Forget the others. My god, I was close. My god. Lay into his wheel arches. Come on. Step on it, Phelps. Take him out. Enough My games, God. Phelps. Take this guy out. God damn it, Cole. Hold it steady. My God. Gabriel Delgado, that you're under weird. arrest for Grand Theft Auto. Fuck you, puto! You should speak to the maricón! Valdez, I showed him! Now who's a man? I should've burned his fucking car! You got a foreign dignitary out it as a fruit and a kitty raper, a car dealer we're gonna let slide for the kickbacks, and a street punk car thief who sure as hell won't be taking liberties with other people's autos again anytime soon. That, Detective Phelps, is not a bad haul. 
You keep your chin low and your hands high, and you keep bringing me clearances just like that one. That's textbook policing, and we need more of it in this department. My God. Uh, so as long as we got the questions right, that's all I care about. You have any plans for Weekend Liberty, Jack? My sisters have been working in Los Angeles in a bomber factory. They're coming down to visit. I'm meeting them at the station at 6. Good for you, Jack. Are they cute? They're my sisters, Hank. Attention! Final inspection before Liberty. Good job, Kelso. Are we going somewhere, gentlemen? Full inspection. It had better be exceptional if any of you want liberty this weekend. Kelso, this carbine. Four is dirty. No, it isn't. Are you arguing with me, Kelso? Do what you need to do, Sergeant. You know the boar's immaculate. Weekend liberty canceled. Two-day field drill. Oh, man. Clean this rifle. No. Do you know the penalty for insubordination, Kelso? Jack, don't do it. Forget him, Hank. He doesn't have what it takes. Are you two finished? Are you going to clean this rifle? No, Sergeant. Cole is right. I'm going to stop playing games and join a rifle company and fight the real enemy. Marriage made in heaven. Gentlemen, I just got this handed to me. A hit and run felony at Ray's Cafe, 208 North Los Angeles. Got a patrolman on site. The coroner's on his way. Get down there, see if you can find any witnesses who can put a make on the car. I say we bust in there and find the goddamn evidence. Parker or Green? Okay. I understand you, but thousands wouldn't. They weren't even his prints, and he still... Looks like the DA is gonna press charges. Anna Rodriguez might do time. I'll speak to the DA. She suffered enough. Mm, I don't know, Cole. She's an easy make, and the DA likes convictions. I'll convince him to let it go. <laughs> How you do that? I'll give him something better. Detectives, over here. Cole Phelps, traffic. What have we got? Because a white male named Lester Patterson walked out of the bar and into the street. Car hit over there and he ended up here. Dead on impact by the look of it. Have you canvassed the area? The only one with anything useful to contribute is the young lady over there. 
She lives above the bar. Her name is Shannon Perry. No, it's not a stage name. 24 years old, she left Kansas to follow the yellow brick road. Is that so? We'll take a formal statement later. Right now, we're going to take a look around. Phelps? You should take a look at the body. I ended on his face and ended up here. The car must have struck him from behind. and has life insurance. What the fuck? We can notify next of kin. What have you got on the victim? From all reports, he was intoxicated at the time of the accident. I'll know how intoxicated once I've done the autopsy. Looking him over now, I'd say he died on impact. What about the chest wound? Isn't that inconsistent? Very common in auto injuries. Look for a car with a prominent hood ornament. Those things are killers. Body traveled a good 20 feet. This blood is a long way from the body. Car must have been going like a bat out of hell. So the driver managed to brake before the impact. Knife covered in blood. Could be a steak knife. This is a hit and run case, Phelps. Anyone could have thrown away a kitchen knife. In any case, we'll want tech services to scrub the alleyway before they bag the knife. Find anything interesting? Maybe talk to some witnesses. We can discuss the autopsy report later. Careful where you're stepping, Phelps. I don't come down to the station house and tap dance on your desk. <laughs> She's all yours, Detective. Miss Perry? Yes? I'm Detective Phelps. This is my partner, Detective Bukowski. Can you tell us what happened? Well, I came to the window because I heard people arguing downstairs. Then what happened? I saw a car hit that poor man and knock him down the street. What kind of car was it? A dark red Lincoln Continental. Did you see the license plate? Only the first three letters, I'm afraid. Three, C, eight. Tell me more about the argument you heard. Well, there were two voices. A man and a woman, that's all. Why are you holding out on us, Miss Perry? I'm sorry. I was hoping to tell my story to the newspapers. I'd like to get my picture in the paper, I'm trying to find work as an actress, and 
things look pretty difficult. Cough it up, sister. We don't have all night. People arguing? They were husband and wife. I could tell by what she was yelling. Intimate things. Very embarrassing for the man. Thank you, Miss Perry. Your information has been very helpful. You can go now. You really think so? I hope you find that driver and put him away. You certainly got away with the dames, Phelps. <laughs> Give it a rest, Bukowski. Let's see what the patrons have to say. I'll take the bartender. You work the rest of the room. Courtney, come in. Have a seat. Thanks, doctor. How are you finding working at the clinic? It's, uh, fine. Are you sure? Can I be honest with you, doctor? I would hope so, Courtney. I was hoping that the therapy would be more beneficial. Treatment can, unfortunately, be very long-term. So many of the patients here are addicts, Doctor. Many of them have been for years, Courtney. In the past, these people were condemned to sanatoriums. If we can reveal the root of the problem, then we have a chance to help them. And until then, they stay sedated? Do I detect a hint of reproach, Courtney? I was expecting more, Doctor. I'm sorry. I don't mean to criticize. Part of being a physician, Courtney, is learning to be patient. How is it possible to keep so many of them on their medications, Doctor? Many of their addictions are illegal. Oh, many things in life are gray, Courtney. What may on the surface appear to be illegal is actually a benefit to society at large. Operator, give me R and I. Phelps, one, two, four, seven. How can I help, Detective? I need to run a partial license plate, three Charles eight. Cross-check possible Lincoln owners. Suspect vehicle is a red Lincoln Continental. Just a moment, Detective. Only one possible make on that license. Registered to a William Shelton, 738 West Temple Street. Thanks for your help. Looks like we caught a break on this one. I'm Detective Phelps of the LAPD. How can I help, Detective? Your name would be a good start. Dudley Lynch. Hired help. I run the place when the owner ain't around. Where is the owner? He stepped out. Somebody had to take Lorna, Mrs. Patterson, home. What can you tell me about the accident? Not a lot. It was busy in here, and all I heard was the impact. So what was he doing outside? It's against licensing regulations to drink on the sidewalk. Esther and Lorna were having a fight. The owner made him take it outside. It was pretty ugly. Do you know the victim? Yeah. Lester Patterson. He's a regular here, or he was. Not one of your favorite customers? Lester was special, but not my kind of special. Was Lester drinking alone? No. He came here with his wife. She didn't seem too interested in the booze, though. A witness overheard an argument. <laughs> Lester and Lorna. There's nothing like airing your dirty laundry in public, is there? Why was Lorna Patterson in such a hurry to leave? What is going on here? Lorna was pretty upset, so Leroy took her home. Lorna and Leroy are close. 
They've been talking about opening a new bar. Leroy. Leroy Sabo, the owner. How long have Lorna and Leroy been talking about this new bar? Uh, who knows? I just served the drinks. Bartenders hear all sorts of things. Are you going to tell me, or do we have to start playing rough? When Lester was drinking, he treated Lorna like dirt. He gambled away all their money. Lorna pitched Leroy about the bar. I don't know how interested he is. Is Leroy doing well? <laughs> Hell no. The only thing keeping this place afloat are the poker games. Thanks for your help, Lynch. I'm going to need you to sign a statement with the patrolman. Sure, no problem. You get anything out of the regulars? They weren't giving too much away. They liked watching Lester and Lorna go a few rounds every other day. And Lester was a fan of the love tap. Give me the glitches. Always missing something. If olive oil comes from olives. Where does baby oil come from? So this is why everybody comes to raise. Okay. Seems irrelevant. That must be it. So the wife was there when it happened, but then left the scene. You're right. That's pretty unusual behavior. She could be in shock. I saw some people do some strange things in the war after their buddies got hurt. Maybe. Maybe she doesn't give a fuck. According to the patrons, her old man was a piece of work. You don't think, Phelps, the guy was run over. So it worked out well for this broad. So what? Maybe she deserved to catch a break. Who knows? Yes? Hello? Mrs. Patterson. Is this about my husband? We're investigating the incident, ma'am. I see. Come in, won't you? Can you tell me what happened? What's to tell? He got hit by a car and now he's dead. You don't appear to be too upset about the fact. Lester and I met on a furlough in 44. We got married that weekend. People don't understand it now, but that happened a lot back then. I see. So you probably did well to stick it out this long. 
What's that supposed to mean, mister? I think it's about time you left. I have someone here, I beg I... your pardon? You're gonna have to run that one by us again, sister. It's okay, Lorna. I'm Leroy Sabo. Well, well. Nice to see you're comforting the grieving widow, Mr. Sabo. All right, wise guy. Do you have any intelligent questions you would like me to answer? You can confirm Mrs. Patterson's story. Lester lost at cards. He was kind of hard to control when he lost his temper. He turned without looking and walked right out in front of the car. It wasn't good. What's your relationship with Mrs. Patterson, Mr. Sabo? We're friends. Good friends. You expect me to believe that? Look, I was filing for divorce. Mental cruelty. Lester could be a mean son of a bitch. And Lester knew about that? No. I hadn't told him. Well, hasn't this worked out well for the two of you? I feel almost bad for busting in on this little rendezvous. How did the car come to hit Lester? He walked straight into the path of an oncoming car. You expect me to believe that, Lorna? It's all very convenient. Gambling for Lester was like the needle for a hophead. He was yelling at me. He was yelling at the whole world. I kind of felt sorry for the driver. Poor guy had no chance. You were arguing in the bar and on the sidewalk. We were always arguing. So what? Admit it. You were baiting him, pushing his buttons. We can easily get the full story from the regulars in the bar. All right. Lester was playing cards out back. He lost, of course, and wanted back in. He suggested I earn the money on my back to get a mistake. That was the proposition he was putting to his so-called buddies. So maybe I was a little angrier than usual. Let's just say I took exception to his idea. The bartender said that you and Leroy were planning to go into business together. Can you explain how you'll get the money to do that? I have a little money saved away. You're being economical with the truth, Lorna. You want to back that up, little man? You increased the premium on Lester's life insurance. GI insurance policies have a $10,000 payout. It was Leroy's idea. Lester lived on the edge. He was always getting into fights, crap games, pinochle, you name it. Turns out it was good advice. It speaks to motive and premeditation, Lorna. You're forgetting the hit and run detective. You and Mr. Sabo have an interesting day. I'm sure we will, officer. Now, if you could both just leave. We're leaving, ma'am. Sorry for your loss. I can see what a tough time you're having with all this. Operator, message for KGPL. Putting you through now. Phelps badge 1247. How can I help, Detective? Are there any messages for me? Just one, Detective, from the coroner. Message reads, Phelps, see me at Central Morgue immediately. Results of the Patterson autopsy. Thanks. to get there in one piece.
son of a bitch right there. William Shelton? Yes. It doesn't look good, Shelton. You packing your bags and making a run for it? You know why we're here. Yes. The accident. We've got witnesses who can put this car at the scene, not to mention the physical damage. This is open and shut, Shelton. That coward thinks he can run from everything. Lay into his wheel arches. Come on. Enough games, Phelps. Take this guy out. No wonder he killed someone driving like this. Don't let that asshole get away. All right, I give up. That's it. Cuff them and we're done. Show me your hands. How does a vehicular manslaughter rap sound, Shelton? I hit him. I admit it. I just panicked, but it wasn't my fault. What do you mean? The guy jumped right out in front of me. He came out of nowhere. There's nothing I could do about it. Why didn't you stop? I've had accidents before. That's it. We're done here. The DA is going to love you. They weren't all my fault. I'm a surveyor. I need my license for my job. There were people around. A woman and a man were standing right next to him. I thought they could get him to a hospital. I'm telling you, it's not my fault. The guy is dead, Shelton. You can't be serious. William Shelton, you're coming downtown. We need to talk about a manslaughter charge. We can put the driver in front of a judge in less than a week. You'd be making a big mistake. Run that by me again? The victim was dead before the car hit him. Two puncture wounds to the right side of the thorax. Second puncture reached his heart. You're kidding me. Been doing this job 23 years, son. No one's ever laughed at one of my jokes. He was stabbed to death? Long, sharp knife. Length of a bayonet. We found a knife in the alleyway. Where is it now? Was it bagged? By Patrolman Kaplan. Perfect. I'll get you a definite match. Jesus, we got him. Murder one. We were right there and they tried to stare us down. Now they'll both get the gas chamber. We have the knife, we have the coroner's report, and I bet we could roll Sabo as a witness. Let's bring her in.
My god, did you read? We've spoken to the coroner, Mrs. Patterson. He confirmed your husband's cause of death. We'd like you to come downtown and answer some questions. It wasn't me. It was Leroy's idea. Leroy stabbed him. I had nothing to do with it. Where is Leroy now? He's in the bedroom. You're very good, Lorna. Put the gun down, Leroy. If you do something stupid now, you don't stand a chance in front of the grand jury. Nice of you to give me up, sweetheart. All that whispering in my ear telling me how we had to get rid of him, how good it could be, all the money we could claim, all that planning, how to get him into the street, how to make it look like an accident. For God's sake, you Leroy, had all shut the up. You bases covered, baby. I have nothing to do you with You think it. I'm going to fry for you, He's Lorna? He's a crazy man. Shoot him. Shoot him, for God's sake. It's too late, Sabo. Sabo, stop or I will shoot! Last chance to surrender, Sabo! Are we going to make a bargain or what? How long do you think you can hold out? You want to back off right now. Help me! Whatever the... You look spooked, Phelps. I thought you'd been under fire before. It never gets any easier, Bukowski. So, I give you a hit and run, you bring me back fraud, conspiracy, and first degree murder. This is how a good detective operates, Phelps. You take nothing at face value. You keep digging and asking questions until you get to the truth. You got some sharp elbows on you, detective. I like that. Keep up the good work. Wow, the jury, you fucking weird. Kowski. B Cop says he located a green Kaiser Fraser from the hot sheet. Address is 6 West 2nd Street. Get over there and see what you can find out. Go on. Sorry to inconvenience you. We're on it, Captain. Yeah, I swear the more vent cars we bring in, the longer the hot sheet gets. It pays the rent, though keeps Mrs. Phelps in the manner to which she's accustomed. I'm not sure she'd agree with you. A passionate romantic type like you, Cole? I don't believe it. My god, I'm so good at this. I got it on me. Oh my god. Nothing, no. 
They're calling her the doll. I wonder what Veronica Lake makes of that one. What a case. You hear whether they're making any progress? Well, Captain Donnelly seems to think they have it all wrapped up. Brown and Green are sweating this manly character. I heard it'll be in front of a grand jury by next week. Poor thing. Terrible enough being murdered like that without having your death strewn all over the front pages. God damn it. the car, Cole. Just pulling out of the drive. Get him! Remember, we need him healthy enough to answer questions. 1247, Detective Phelps requesting immediate backup in pursuit of a stolen green Kaiser Fraser from 6 West 2nd Street. Enough games, Phelps. Take this guy out. All right, all right. Maybe I was a couple miles over the speed. Put your hands in the air! Get bracelets. Why did you run from us? I saw a big car in my rearview mirror with two tough guys bearing down on me. What would you do? What's your name? Cliff Harrison. You're under arrest. For what? What are you talking about? Nice try. I'm talking about the car being stolen. You're out of your mind. I bought the car, and I've got the paperwork to prove it. Looks like we'll have some questions for the people at Coombs Automotive. You purchased this car from Coombs Automotive Company? Yeah, that's right. And the ownership papers? Are from the same place. If this is a forgery, it's top notch. This will need to be traced. Do you have a criminal record, Mr. Harrison? No. Nothing like that. You better give us something, Cliff, or we're gonna make this hard on you. I didn't steal the car. I ran because... because I've got some wacky backy in the glove compartment. How much, Cliff? One reefer. We'll let it slide. You're in enough trouble. Who did you deal with at Coombs Automotive? The owner, Richard Coombs. And he made out the bill of sale, personally? Of course he did. He kept a facsimile for his records. Check with him. We're going to get to the bottom of this, Harrison. Until we do, you're going downtown. You gotta be kidding me. I'm getting arrested for buying a goddamn car? If everything is legit, Harrison, you'll be out soon. Until then, if I were you, I'd keep my mouth shut. Bag his possessions as evidence. And have him arranged for Grand Theft Auto. Right, Detective. Do you know who my father is? We need to get to Coombs Auto and check out Harrison's story. what I think he's telling the truth some of the most convincing people you will ever listen to are born liars usually they're called politicians the paperwork all looked above board and he seemed like a clean-cut kid uh huh well, I get it now you see some kid who's basically you five years ago and assume he's got to be innocent. I'm more than happy to be proved wrong. Hey, if he'd been black or Hispanic, you'd be singing a different tune. You spout all this communist crap about treating everybody the same, but it only works one way. I'm not sure that's communism, Stefan. 
Oh, God, please. Not another history lesson from the man who single-handedly won the war. Are you finished? Yes. I feel much better now. We'll shake down the car dealer and take it from there. Unless his daddy plays golf with yours, of course. In which case, we'll give him a firm gentleman's handshake and be on our way. See? I knew you weren't finished. Not another step. I have got a Buick Century sedan that would be absolutely perfect for you. Detective Phelps, LAPD, are you the owner? That's right. Richard Coombs, at your service. You looking to trade in a black and white, boys? <laughs> Mr. Coombs, we're investigating an auto theft. A man by the name of Cliff Harrison claims he bought the car here. Well, uh, some people would say that my cars are a steal. That's a joke, son. Very amusing, Mr. Coon. I remember Harrison. It was a green two-tone Kaiser Fraser, if I remember rightly. Do you have the bill of sale? It's in my office. Walk this way. That's a joke, too, son. Phelps, you mind if I shoot this guy? He's getting on my nerves. I would do the same thing. Sure I can't interest you in a nearly new car, son? I'm all but giving them away to servicemen and cops. Here it is. Got the original pink slip there, too. Gene Archer. 146 North Fremont Avenue. Wait a minute. Harrison's purchase receipt was legit, at least. We have a couple of questions. All right, fellas. Shoot. Can you tell us how you came to buy the car? Girl just wandered in right off the street. Nothing unusual about the car. Not really my usual type of vehicle. The price was certainly right, though. Nice girl, but about as sharp as a bag of wet mice. Did you pay with check or cash? A check. She wanted it made out to cash, but I insisted. Man has to watch his cash flow. What name? I made it out to Gene Archer on the Bank of Arcadia. Can you describe this Gene Archer? Brunette, maybe 25, 26. A little on the plump side, but not bone ugly. What was your impression of her? Kind of harried and harassed, in a hurry to go somewhere but no place to go. You get to know the type. Do you know anything about the company that prints these pink slips? Nope. Should I? It isn't exactly my business. It says Marquee Printing. You've never heard of them? Marquee. Sure. They do all the government red tape. You'll find the place down on Aliso Street near San Pedro. When exactly did you hand over the check, Mr. Combs? Close of play on Friday. Why didn't you pay her cash? You knew the car was dirty. I had an inkling. When people are in a hurry for money, always pay by check, son. Gives you a couple days to back out. This was all above board. Yes, of course it was. Did this look legitimate to you, Coombs? I'm in used cars, son, not bearer bonds. In my business, you don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Now don't come on all high and mighty with me if you want my help. Thanks for your help, Mr. Coombs. We need to continue the investigation. Hope you sort out your problem with Mr. Harrison. Go easy on him, son. Boy's about as sharp as a bowling ball. He's built too low. The fastballs fly over his head. Let me shoot this guy, please. 
You have a pleasant day, Mr. Coombs. Well, Harrison might be off the hook, but we can still run an APB on Gene Archer. Get on the horn and call it in. Phelps, badge 1247. How could I help, Detective? Requesting an APB on Gene Archer, age approximately 25, on suspicion of Grand Theft Auto. I'll relay the information. Messages, please. A James Velasco is being held at Central Station on suspicion of GTA. Possible link to the Harrison case. They're waiting on you to conduct the interview. Thank you. Here's a chicken and egg question for you. Do you think you have to be an asshole to sell cars? Or that selling cars turns you into an asshole? You've got it in for everyone today, haven't you? I've always got it in for car salesmen. Doesn't matter what day it is. And why do they always think they're comedians when they're about as funny as a heart attack? Maybe the more annoying they are, the quicker you sign on the dotted line, just to get the hell out of there. Empty. Should have known that Archer Broad would have given us a false address. We should go to the station, see what this Belasco guy has to say. Detectives, Belasco is prepped and ready in two. Another stolen car with legit papers. Thanks. Ah, that's a shame. Crummy bastard. James Belasco? I want a lawyer. It's my car and I got the proof right here. Take a look for yourself. is real enough, Belasco, but the car isn't yours. This pink slip is a forgery. Okay. Where were you taking the car, James? Blow it off, Greenhorn. You'll get nothing from me. You're a two-time loser. If you don't give me something, I'm gonna ask the DA for the maximum. You're looking at ten years, Belasco. Kiss your youth goodbye. I, I want a deal. Keep talking and we'll see what sort of deal you're worth. My job is to drive the cars out of state. Nevada, Arizona, sometimes New Mexico. With the paperwork they provide, it's normally a breeze. Does the name Gene Archer mean anything to you? Nope. Never heard of her. You're a liar, James. Say that again. I'm telling the truth. I don't know the broad. So that's why you both have the same address printed on your pink slips. She's a mule for these stolen vehicles, genius. Same as you. Jesus. All right, I know her. Stupidest broad I ever met. Always cooking up crazy schemes. I don't know why those guys use her. You happy now? 
What happens to the cars once they cross over the state lines? I don't know. I just deliver them. Give me something, Velasco, or I'll take you back to the cells and tell the whole station you're a child molester. How long do you think you'll last? Okay, okay. I hear you. The cars get sold in Chicago or back east. Sometimes I bring back cars coming the other way. Where do you pick up the cars, Velasco? Warehouses. Mainly in East downtown. An address, Velasco. You want my help with the DA? Cough it up, now. A place on Industrial Street. I don't know the number. You're gonna help me out, right? Keep talking, kid. We'll see what we can do. All right, James. We're gonna check if this information is worth anything. And if it is, I need your help here, pal. If it is, then we'll know you're a man of your word, and so will the DA. You're Phelps, right? Yes, I am. Look, can we do this later? I'm in the middle of it. Ray Pinker. I'm with Technical Services. The pink slips are all real. Yes, we know that. There's only one company that prints them in California, the Marquee Printing Company. They've confirmed that the numbers are legitimate. You've checked them out? Sure. They're on Aliso Street, near the corner of San Pedro. The guy I spoke to was Lightball. Gordon Lightball. Here, I wrote it down. Thanks, Ray. This is a great lead. We'll get down there as soon as we can. Phelps, your GTA suspect, Gene Archer, spotted by a patrolman. Western Union office, 253 South Hill. Less than a minute away down the street if you run. Go! But you won't hang around. <laughs> We don't want to lose her. LAPD. See your married we'll take it from again. here. God damn it. Everyone's against me. Look, just let me get my money and get out of here, okay? You look sweet. How about giving a girl a break? I could be very nice. I'm afraid I can't do that, Miss Archer. Stefan, call for black and white. Just my luck to get the only hair sure cop in the LAPD. The car you sold to Coombs was stolen, Miss Archer. There won't be any money. I handed over all the right paperwork when I sold it, Buster. Gene, you've blown open the whole operation because you were dumb enough to try to sell one of the cars. What do you think they're going to do to you? Give me something. I was just doing what they do. They pay me 50 bucks to drive the car. I made two grand selling it. You made zero. And if they catch you, you're dead. Is that all your life's worth? Look, a girl needs things. I don't see you looking out for me. How long have you and Belasco been delivering cars? Who is James Belasco? You're lying. James Belasco. I don't remember mentioning his first name, Miss Archer. Oh, I... Well, I think you did, didn't you? Well, I'm sure of it. Anyway... I don't know him. You aren't sharp enough to lie to me, Gene. You and James Belasco share the same address on your pink slips. We have him in a cell. Okay, so I know the creep. The pink slips are real. The home addresses are always vacant lots. Bigelow is always boasting that the paperwork is legit and that if we stick to our stories... And don't try and sell the car? Yeah, that too. Tell me where you picked up the car, Miss Archer. Look, I, I can't remember. Let me go, will you? Please. What have I got to do? I'm trying my patience here, Jean. I'll have the reporters down here and have your picture in all the papers. You'll have nowhere to run. All right already. 
I get the message. I pick up the cars from a guy named Bigelow. 58 Industrial Street. Big warehouse full of goons. Now you've got what you want. Can I go? Please? No, you sure can. We've got a car waiting outside for you. Some career advice, Gene. Get out of crime. Marry someone boring who has money and will find you captivating. Is this guy for real? He takes a little getting used to, but yeah, he generally means what he says. Sorry, chaps. Friendly girl. Used to getting her own way. Little did she know her feminine charms were useless against the impenetrable Cole Phelps. She's not my type. And what is your type, Phelps? I'm married. I know that. But you're not blind or dead inside, are you? Wait. Scrap that second half of the question. Uh... I don't know. Blondes, I guess. Hallelujah! The man is human after all! Now we're getting some. Yep. I'm with you on the blondes. Brunettes are fine, too. And there's nothing wrong with a good redhead. <laughs> But I draw the line at gray. You know what? I might have to lift that embargo soon in the interest of maintaining a free market. A man with high standards. My standards are only as high as the last glass of whiskey. Has that just been paid look about him? And what can I do for you, gentlemen? I'm a traffic detective from Central Division. Who's in charge here? I am, Gordon Lightfall. What's this about? We understand that your company prints California vehicle titles. Yes, I have the government contract to print pink slips. I've done for some years. Have you had any goods or equipment stolen recently? We're running up against stolen cars with seemingly legitimate paperwork. Not recently. Uh, have you ruled out forgery? There's no shortage of talented artists in this town. We'll keep it in mind. We have some questions for you, Mr. Lightball. Mr. Lightvall, we're currently working two auto theft cases. Do you know anything about a car theft ring? Uh, certainly not. Why would I get mixed up in a thing like that? We have suspects with legitimate pink slips that were printed here, Lightvall. You better give me something before I bring the whole department down here. Don't be hysterical, detective. As a matter of fact, we had a similar problem a couple of years ago. A number of used car lots were selling blank documents to a criminal organization. Do the names Cliff Harrison and James Belasco mean anything to you? No, they do not. Harrison bought his car from Coombs. The pink slip looks good, and that points the finger here. Do you have any employee trouble? No, I don't. They've all been carefully screened. Look, now that I think about it, the name Coombs sounds familiar. I think they may have been involved in stolen documents in the past. Do you have a delivery ledger, Mr. Lightvall? We would like to cross-check against the Coombs Automotive Emporium. It's a little out of the ordinary, Detective. Uh, I'm not sure I can share those sorts of records. 
Hand it over, light ball. You don't want us having bad thoughts about you, do you? Very well. But this really is irregular. Over here. Citizen reports a 211 in progress, 4370 State Street, unit to handle code 3, identify. You Marines were gung ho, Cole. You have a 45. Don't you ever want to use it? I'll take the back. Just give me a few seconds to get around there. Cole Phelps, LAPD. All of you are coming downtown with me. Throw out the guns. Drilled in the back on the way out. No, no. something. All right, all right, don't shoot! Keep your hands up. Watch him, Bukowski. He doesn't move until I've tossed this place. Marquee Printing Company. <laughs> There's nothing like going direct to the source. Betting slip. Looks like Mr. Lightfall has been on a losing streak.
There are enough slips here to keep them stealing cars till Christmas. We've got a trail of pink slips and stolen cars that leads right to your door, Bigelow. You're in this up to your neck, but I don't think you're the man in charge. Make it easier on yourself. Give him up. I do work on cars for customers. You charge in here shooting up the place like it's the Ballad of Bulge. I can't give you anything. We know about Marky printing. You can make this easier on yourself by giving us your man on the inside. I sometimes repair cars and put them back on the road. I need a pink slip to resell them. There's no problem there. There are at least four dead men in this warehouse. A couple more. Punks won't make for that much extra paperwork. We'd be doing the legal system a favor. Okay, okay, tough guy. I get the message. Lightfall. The guy who runs Marquis. He's the big shot. He likes to spend big at the track. He owes people. You can't just shoot up my place and leave me here. Missing something. We've got a trail of pink slips Wait, and what? stolen cars that leads right to your door, Bigelow. You're in this up to your neck, but I don't think you're the man in charge. Make it easier on yourself. Give him up. I do work on cars for customers. Okay. You charge in here shooting up the place like it's the Ballad of Bulge. I can't give you anything. Right. You can't just shoot up my place and leave me here. We've got a trail of pink slips and what stolen cars that leads right to your door, Bigelow. You're in this up to your neck, but I don't think you're the man in charge. Make it easier on yourself. Give him up. I do work on cars for customers. You charge in here shooting up the place like it's the Ballad of Bulge. I can't give you anything. I don't know exactly I see the... You can't just shoot up my place and leave me here! Don't your shit. Okay, I'm confused. Light Vault. The guy with no luck at the track. Tell me about him. It's one of the guys lying over there. You're right. He has no luck. I don't know how about so I'm very confused. Oh shit. Spit it out, copper. I ain't got all day. That's the best lie you can come up with, Bigelow? Hey, would I lie to you, detective? I'm not exactly in a good position here now, am I? Uh, screw it. Get it wrong, get it wrong. Gordon Lightball owns Marquee Printing, a government print shop. He's losing big at the track. He has these big government contracts. He's in Harkov with 20 grand. If the feds find out, 
contracts will be all over. Lightfo plays ball. All right, Bigelow. The heat is off you. Play your cards right, and you'll be able to count your time in Quentin on one hand. Okay. Look is all. This is a secure area. You all need to leave. Yep, they don't watch into major. Uh Ugh, gonna take some cleaning up, that's for sure. I wish it hadn't gone that way. Well, they shouldn't bring guns to work with them. We didn't have a lot of choice. You have to admire the barefaced cheek of someone who tries to blow your brains out one minute and then pleads innocence the next. Yeah, especially when he's surrounded by evidence. The guys like Bigelow spend so much time convincing themselves that they're not doing anything wrong that they actually start to believe their own bullshit. They get sloppy. Bigelow, Lightball, all of them. If they hadn't, who knows how long they could have kept this racket going. Complacency or greed. It's always one of the two that brings them down. KGP LJ and the unit to 459, they're now at 267 South Main. Unit to handle code 2, identify. <laughs> My God. You're under arrest. You again? This harassment is starting to wear thin. We found a box of pink slips and a warehouse full of hot cars. You signed for them, Lightbulb. I signed for all the orders and deliveries. You'll need something better than that, cowboy. Save it, Lightbulb. We already have all we need to send you down. I've had enough of this. You either produce some shred of proof or I call my attorney. You're in the hole with the organization. We know about the debts, Lightball. I agree. I have a small problem. I'm prepared to help you in any way I can, Detective. I'll name names. Uh, I need you to keep this out of the paper. I need... You need to shut up now, Lightball. <laughs> Gordon Lightball, I'm charging you with conspiracy and fraud. Hands behind your back. The LAPD Central Traffic Division has today smashed a nationwide auto theft ring, writes crime correspondent, blah, blah, blah. Oh, here it is. Traffic squad detectives confronted a large group of armed thugs. After an exchange of gunfire, more than a dozen dead criminals were removed from the scene. The LAPD sustained no casualties. Damn fine work, Phelps. Now get out there and nail some more bad guys, will you? I want to finish reading this. Because of that one call, and I think that says the uh, chaps for the girl check comments.
See you later, champs.